Hi guys and welcome to this video on simple interest, part of our financial maths component and very excited we are. My name's Darren, maths guru, really good to see you. Now what is simple interest? Well, it doesn't sound particularly good does it? And actually, believe it or not, I'm not that impressed with simple interest. Why? Well you'll find out a little bit more in just a moment. But if you can, do me a favour and subscribe to YouTube. No one actually watches my channel and just by clicking that subscribe button just lets me know that you are and actually I'm doing this uh, for a reason and that it's actually useful. For. Leave a comment below actually if you could. If you're on YouTube, just say hi, Masguru, thanks very much. Great video. If you enjoyed it, if you didn't enjoy it, just don't say anything. Please, God, don't say anything. And head over to mathsguru.com where my videos are all ordered by textbook and by chapter and have downloadable notes and exam questions and so, so much more. Good to see you. Rightio, what are we going to do with today? Understand what simple interest is. You, if you have a bank account, hopefully are earning interest. That's the money the bank is going to give you. There were two types, simple interest and compound interest. I'm gonna deal with the simple interest first. Calculate simple interest using a simple interest formula. Isn't it great that there are formulas for everything and you get your summary book so you can write it in there. Know how to use the CAS to explore simple interest relationships and understand about interest paid on bank accounts. Now again, in a previous video, we looked at a load of language. We looked at uh, markups and discounts and all those type of things. And we looked at percentages and how to do it. Awesome, that's in our thing. Don't forget it, we're gonna start using it. Now interest is basically a reward. The banks reward you for putting your money with them because what happens is you pay it in and then they use your money to lend it to other people, theoretically speaking, yes? So my mortgage is probably, you own probably part of my house, believe it or not, because your eight cents probably owns the front door knocker uh, on my house. <laughs> you said knocker, oh, awkward. Anyway, uh, so, but the banks obviously will only give you, or you're only gonna give the banks your money if they give you something back in return, and it's called interest. At the moment, it's historically low um, because of COVID. Now, interest can be paid in two ways, but it's important to know that it's calculated daily in the real world and added at the end of each month or quarter, depending, yeah? It's also what they charge on money they lend you. So my bank is lending me money to purchase the house I'm currently sitting in, and they're charging me interest, which interestingly, no pun intended, is a lot, lot more than you are getting in your bank. So someone somewhere is making a lot of money. Yes, the banks. All right, now rates of interest will always be higher than the rate of interest for you lending. And again, there's some language that you need to know about for this type of stuff. So number one, principal. Not only is it that guy or lady who runs the school, I'm not even sure it's spelled that one, but we'll give it. Yeah, it's basically the amount of money they either give you or you give them. If you give it to them, we call it an investment, if they give it to you, it's generally a loan of some description. So again, the language there is going to be important in the questions to know whether you're giving the bank money or they're giving me money. Interest rate. Again, this is given in terms of percentage and it's a reward and it's generally given as something called per annum. So they'll talk about interest per year, but then your banks work out what that is per day. Don't get tricked. And simple interest is effectively a fixed amount of money the bank gives you for interest based on the principal value, based on the principal value you invested. And again, that's the important thing there, the principal value. So, so here's an example. How much interest will be earned if investing $1,000 at 5% per annum simple interest for three years? So again, PA stands for per annum. It means you get 5% for every single year that is there. But simple interest is only on your principal. So the first thing I need to do is work out 5% of $1,000. Well, that's five divided by 100, because I'm going from a percentage to a multiplier, times by 1,000. Two zeros cross off there, and that gives me five times 10, which is 50 bucks. Now, what that means is you are going to get $50 every single year that you leave the account or the money in there, right? So because it's got, uh, so how much interest will be earned? Because it's gonna be there for three years, and they're gonna have three times 50 or $150. Do you smell a bit of a rat there? Well, they've sort of robbed you a little bit there, but we'll come back to that in a moment. Now, there is a formula that can help you do this straight away if you don't want to break it down in like I just did there, because I worked out the percentage and then I worked out the money and then I times it by three. Well, there is a formula that says the interest earned 
is given by PRT over 100. Now, P stands for the principal, that's how much money you've given. R is the rate of interest per annum. And T is the time in years that you are investing. And it's be very careful there, it's time in years. There's a question coming up, they're gonna try and trick you. All right, so that formula, I equals PRT on 100, should be in your summary book. How do we use it? Exactly like this. Calculate the amount of simple interest. Now the question's told you simple interest. Later on we'll come to compound interest and you'll know which one is which, but simple interest that we paid on an investment of 5,000 at 10% simple interest per annum for three years and six months. Mm -hmm. See what they did there. So because we know that I is P R T on 100. Now I've done it in lowercase just to match the Cambridge General Mass textbook. And thank you Cambridge for allowing me to use your examples. You guys rock, thank you so much. Textbooks are brilliant. They've used lowercase, doesn't actually matter. So the interest is equal to the principal, which was 5,000 times by R, the rate of interest, 10, times by the time. Now, three years and six months is actually three and a half years. So 3.5, and I'm gonna divide that by 100. So two zeros cancel with two zeros on the top. And if you don't know what I'm doing there, don't worry about it. You just put that in your calculator and it will solve it all for you. So I have 50 times 10, which is 500 times 3.5. And I could work that out in my head, but I'm not gonna do. 500 times 3.5 gives me 1750. 1750. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, $1,750 over those three years and six months is the interest earned. Now be very careful again there. That's just the interest. It doesn't tell you how much I've got in my bank account at the end, but we can probably work it out, can't we? Because if I know what my principal is and I know what my interest is, then what do I do? Add them together to find out how much is in my account. Now, what does this look like on a graph? It's important that you also know that this is a relationship, some sort of linear relationship, yeah? It's something, uh, so let's just go for an example. $1,000 invested at a simple interest rate of 8.25% per annum for a 10 year period. Plot the growth in interest. Now, because it says growth in interest, we're just looking for the interest, not how much I've got in my bank account, just how much my interest is earned over that period. Now, the great thing about our CAS is we can get it to do all the hard work for me, but we need to give it a formula in which to be able to calculate stuff. So my interest is given by the principal. So what did we have? One, oh, 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 is that 10,000? Times the rate, 8.25, times by the time, now, I don't know what the time is at the moment, but we'll come back to that in a second, divided by 100. Now, bearing in mind this is a formula where you're going to give the calculator a time, we're gonna give it a, a value of t, and it's gonna work out the interest for me. So again, cross those through, cross those through, that gives me 100 times 8.25, so 100 times 8.25, times t. Now, when I do 100 times anything, I bounce my decimal point two places to the right. So that gives me 825 times t. Now, if you've thought about what that means, that means basically for every single year, you can get 825 bucks. Yeah, that's basically what that formula is telling me. But knowing that, I then set up my list and spreadsheet. These are the instructions for the TI Inspire. I don't have the Casio Castpad anymore because I've changed schools. When we go into our list and spreadsheet, because the question said it wanted us to do it over 10 years, the first thing I'm gonna do is create two columns. The first column is gonna be time, and I'm gonna go from the numbers from one to 10, because those are the years we are looking for. And then I'm going to make sure that I label. Now, if you haven't already worked out, you must make sure you label the top of your columns first. I've done it way too many times that I've put the numbers one to 10 in and gone, oh, I'll call it time. I've written in the word time and it's deleted all my values or it's brought up different values. One of the most annoying thing with the calculators, it remembers previous values. So time and interest. And then you'll notice this thing here is my formula. It equals 825 times time. And what that does is tell your calculator for each of the values in the time column, multiply it by 825. And there we go, that's what we get. Having done that, I'm now gonna go and insert a data and statistics screen. And what you notice is when the minute you do that, the dots all go and look completely funky, they're all over the place, and it says click to add variable there, and click to add variable there. So what are we gonna do? 
Well, on the bottom, we want to make sure we have time. And up here, we want to make sure that we have interest. And that's what I did. So I clicked, and as you can see, I've got two choices there. I chose time, and then I chose interest. And lo and behold, what happens? We get a beautiful linear graph. And that's something else that is important to notice. Simple interest is a linear relationship. It grows up by the same amount each time. Pretty, huh? Yeah. Uh, then what I said was, well, what about if we found the total amount we had in our bank account? Right, because interest is nice, but I want to know, show me the money, the mula. yeah? And all I did then was go back and I added another column and I called it total. And in this sense, I made my formula equals $10,000, because that's what we opened our account with, plus the interest at that time, yeah? So you'll notice there it says plus uh, IN, it says interest. Now, the graph is still linear because I'm just adding 10,000 onto each of those values. But what you now notice is this value here gives me how much I would have in my bank account, just over $18,000 um, by the time I've invested. Now, calculate the amount of simple interest loan or investment. In this situation, what they're saying is, let's work out how much our loan is gonna be or investment's gonna be. This is effectively saying, let's add the principal and the interest. So a loan, as I say here, is when the bank gives you money and you pay interest on it and the loan gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Loans are always bad. And an investment where you give money to someone and they pay you interest. And in which case, that's good when it gets bigger. So loans getting bigger, bad. Uh, investments getting bigger, good. Right? So generally speaking, we can use the formula here that says A equals P plus I, where A, for some strange, strange reason, stands for the final amount. A. Go figure. P is the principal amount and I is the interest. Now you guys have got this, you already know how to do this, but just remember that your formula, I equals PRT on 100, gives you the interest earned, or interest charged, I suppose. Find the total amount owing. Notice the change in language now. The total amount owed on a simple interest loan of that at 8% per annum after two years. So first thing we're gonna do is work out the interest. So the interest in this situation is my principal, which is 16,000, times by my rate of interest, which is eight, times by the number of years, which is two, divided by 100. Okay, cancel two of those zeros there. That's gonna give me 160, times eight times two is 816. And again, put that into my calculator, 160 times 16 gives me $2,560. Is that the end of my question? Mm. Why? Because that's just the interest. It wants to know how much is owed. And in which case, we would say that A is equal to P plus I. The principal was 16,000. I'm gonna add on 2,560, and that's gonna give me 18,000. $560. Now, if you think about that, that's a loan. That means you now own, owe the bank even more money. You've taken out the 16,000, but after two years, you owe them $18,560 for the pleasure. Now, obviously, a real thing about loans is you start to pay money back, but it's outside this video. Interest paid to bank accounts, this is a good thing, right? So when interest is paid into your bank account, that's good, because you're getting the money. But again, what they tend to do is they pay it on the minimum monthly balance in the account. Yes, it's not always true. I think in real life they actually pay it per day. So at the end of the day, they look how much money you've got in the bank and they pay you interest on that amount. But for this textbook, we're going to say that the minimum monthly balance is how much you get interest from. Yeah. Now, when we have a statement, yeah, have you got your statements from your bank accounts? You look at them, make sure they haven't actually stolen any money from you. Mm-hmm, be careful, yeah? Well, we're gonna now start looking for the minimum monthly balance. And here's an example. And what you notice, we've got a statement here. And we've got June, we've only got one transaction in June. We have two transactions in July and one transaction in August. Now, obviously here, they tried to trick you because, mm-hmm, anyway. So if the bank pays interest at a rate of 3% per annum on the minimum monthly balance, so we know that R is 3%, find the interest payable for the month of July correct to the nearest cent. Okay, so my interest is gonna be given by 
P, which is my principal, so that's the smallest amount of money I have in my account. What is the smallest amount I have in July? $350. So $350 times by three. Now, it says the time in years. Now, because it's just one month, that is one twelfth of a year. Don't get tricked with those type of questions, yeah? Because a lot of people just put one in there and sadly that will give you the wrong answer. Now again, I can't do that in my head. So what I'm gonna do is 350, I'm gonna multiply that by three and multiply that by a 12th. One on 12 and 87.5. I'm gonna divide that by 100 and that's gonna give me 0 0.875. So my interest is 0 0.875. What does that even mean? Well, remember, interest is money. So I'm going to put a dollar in front of there. And the minute I put that dollar, and that's not an eight, that's a dollar, I notice that my money can't have three decimal places. It's got to have two. So let's round that up to 0 0.88. And there we go. So in July, I will have earned 88 cents. Whoop, whoop. Never going to be rich, never going to be famous. Thanks very much for watching this video, guys. I'm going to call it a day and talk to myself in just a second, but I hope you're doing well. I'll see you again. Bye-bye. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Yes, this is the end of another video. If you haven't already done so, can you click on my subscribe button? Yes, it doesn't mean anything other than the fact that I know that you are watching. Yes, it's greatly appreciated. Otherwise, I feel like I'm sitting here just talking to myself. And then, yes, there is mathsguru.com, of which you can see a still of now. And what is over there? Well, all the videos ordered by textbook, ordered by topic. You can search for the videos. You can download notes time codes, exam questions, and so, so much more coming up. Yeah, it's absolutely free to join. So I'm done. Thank you very much. I hope to see you in another video. Give me a shout out to your mates if you can. I just want to make sure that everyone finds maths interesting and easy. All right, take care, guys. See you again. Bye. -bye. Stay safe.